All right, are you sensing a theme here? We're gonna talk about animating color. Um, if these are starting to really make sense or um, if you just wanna cruise through this code and jump to the next one, you can. Um, but we're going to uh, create a ball, a circle that moves back and forth and changes color based on its X position. And then we'll add some extra stuff as well. Um, so to do that, I know I, I need an X value. And again, I'm gonna start this in the middle. And uh, let's see, I think I also want a variable for speed and a radius we can make change or that way we know the radius. Maybe we could make that change later too. Um, okay, cool. So now let's first start just by moving our, our ball around. So we can do fill. Uh, for now, we'll just make it white and we'll change its color shortly and a circle at X and in the center and using our radius. And then we can say X plus equals speed if X. Now let's say we wanna make it bounce off the sides. Um, you could do X is less than zero, um, but I think better would be X is uh, less than the radius or X is greater than the width minus the radius. And then we reverse the speed just like before. So now we should see this ball it goes up to the edges and bounces, looks really good. So let's say we wanna change then its color. We want its color to shift as it moves back and forth. Um, this uh, would, you would think at first, okay, maybe I want map here um, and you could do it with R, G and B values, but it's gonna be a little complicated. It's the code's gonna get a little messy and, and processing has this really great built-in function called lerp color. Um, and lerp is one of my favorite words. Um, and basically it takes two RGB values um, and then um, a percent between zero and one and it'll evenly transition those colors and you get really nice even color transitions. Um, so I'm gonna create two color values. One that's orange and one that's like a light blue. And then we need to calculate our percent. Now, um, X is going between um, the radius of the circle and the width minus the radius of the circle. And this starts to get a little hairy. You know, you could do this by hand, but this is actually where map would be really helpful. Um, so our percent is gonna be using map, which is between the radius and the width minus the radius. And we wanna go between zero and one. And now we can say, instead of fill 255, I'm gonna do, you could make a variable for this. Actually, maybe let's do that. So we can say, let C lerp color, and we're gonna go from two and percent, and then we can fill with this. You could also just do the lerp color command inside the fill. Um, and sometimes that's easier, sometimes maybe it's a little harder to read. And now we should see it transition from this blue. And as it bounces, it's gonna get to kind of like a middle grayish color and then turn orange and back and forth. Um, so you can see lerp color is super nice for this because it just it handles all the math. It's much more readable um, and, it, and it looks really, really good. Um, so let's, let's do a bonus here. Let's add a smaller circle that rotates around this bigger one, orbiting it like a moon. Um, and then we can, kind of think of like day and night, I guess. So um, as it crosses a certain angle, it'll turn white. And then as it crosses the other one, it'll go turn to black and back and forth. Um, so the first thing we're gonna need for that is um, some kind of angle of rotation. And we'll set that started at zero. And I'm gonna give myself some room down here. Cool. So for this, because we're using rotate, we need to use push and pop. So uh, push and pop. And we wanna translate. Now, in this case, it's not gonna be a fixed position. We wanna to translate to the middle of this circle. So zero, and we know the middle, it, you know, it's going back and forth, so horizontally. So it's height divided by two. And then we can rotate by that angle. Um, now, remember all that's doing is sort of shifting everything. Now, if we wanna draw it out, we need to use translate one more time. So translate. And let's go zero in the X direction and just go up. And I'm gonna do radius times 1.6. I've sort of experimented and found this value to work pretty good. Uh, and then we can draw a, a circle there. So for now, let's do fill 255 circle at zero, zero and 
50. And I'm just going to run this. This looks good. So obviously, it's not changing. Um, and that's because we don't update this angle value. It's always staying the same. So then we could say angle plus equals. I'm going to go two degrees. And now it spins around it, which is pretty cool. So let's say then we want to change the color. We want to know if the angle is between 0 and 180 degrees, it'll be white. And if it's between 180 and 360, it'll be black. Uh, to do that, then we want to be able to change this fill. So I could say if angle is less than, now you could do radians of 180, but pi is 180 degrees. So I'm going to say fill 255, else fill zero. Now let's see what happens when this runs, because it's not going to do exactly what we want. We can see it changes, but then it stays black. And can you think about why that is? Well, the reason is that because we're adding to this angle um, every time, the minute it gets beyond a full circle, then it's always greater than, or actually halfway around, then it's always greater than pi or 180 degrees. Um, so we just like when we change the speed back and forth, we probably want to reset this angle if it gets too big. So I can say if angle is greater than or equal to 2 pi, or a full circle, angle equals 0. So basically, it resets it. And now when we run it, we'll see if it changes color, and it flips back, etc., 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 which is pretty cool. So you can use lerp color to change color. You could use a conditional as it um, enters a region or its size gets within a certain range or whatever to change color. I'm sure you can think of lots of ways of adding this in. Um, this is the last of these basics demos. So we talked about, um, I don't remember the order, uh, position, rotation, size, and color. These are all then going to apply to a lot of the ideas that we're going to cover in the next videos. Um, and really, truly, you can combine these in, in amazing ways to make really awesome animations just with these simple kinds of tools.